Driveline noise can originate in several places, from the engine mounts, the transmission or transmission mounts, the prop shaft U-joints, the rear spring U-bolts, or in the rear axle. But because the noise frequently seems to come from the rear, it's easy to mistake the sound of another driveline component for that of the rear axle. So before you put the vehicle up on the hoist, it's a good idea to perform a running test to determine if the problem is actually coming from the rear axle. Run the car between 30 and 55 miles per hour, accelerating and decelerating lightly while you listen for the noise. If this produces a clunk, it could mean the differential requires servicing. But first, look at the other driveline components. Make sure the engine mounts and the transmission mounts are tight. Examine the universal joints for excessive clearance and check the rear mounting bolts. Then, with the engine running and the brakes firmly applied, have a helper shift from neutral to reverse while you stand under the transmission to check for reverse squawk. Reverse squawk may occur when shifting automatic transmissions into reverse. It is a harmless noise and does not indicate any transmission defects. Once you are reasonably certain the noise is in the axle, check for excessive drive gear backlash and adjust if necessary as described in the service manual. Also check to see if the axle has a sure grip differential because this session's diagnosis does not apply to sure grip. A possible source of differential clunk is excessive clearance between the differential side gears and the differential pinion gears. This can be easily checked and adjusted on the car. On the eight and a quarter and nine and a quarter inch axles, remove the cover and clean the differential thoroughly with a suitable solvent. Begin by measuring the clearances behind the side gears. Always insert two matching gauges on opposite sides of the hub to assure a correct reading. If the clearance at each gear is five thousandths or less, leave the gauges in place behind the gear and check to see if the axle shaft end on the side you are measuring is up against the pinion shaft. If you find the axle shaft end does not touch the pinion shaft, then the differential gears meet specifications and you'll have to look somewhere else for the cause of the noise problem. If you find more than 5,000 side gear clearance, leave the gauges in place and check at the axle shaft end for clearance. If end play clearance does exist with the gauges still in place, record the side gear clearances. Now you'll have to remove the thrust washers to measure them. Begin by removing the lock pin and sliding the pinion shaft out. Remove the wheels and brake drums. But before you do, remember to block up the brake pedal to avoid accidentally expanding the wheel cylinders. This allows you to push the axle shafts in Pull the locks off and slide the shafts out. Now you can remove the pinion gears and the side gears and washers, remembering to keep each side separate. Use a micrometer to measure the thrust washer thickness for each side and record it. Adding the thrust washer thickness to the side gear clearance tells us which replacement thrust washer to use. Here, it's 42 thousandths and 46 thousandths. The replacement washers come in four nominal thicknesses, each identified with a different code. So, we select the largest washers we can insert, in this case, 42 thousandths for each side. After you install the side gears with the washers, roll them into place, then install the locks and seat the axle shafts. Replace the pinion shaft. Install a new lock pin. And torque it to 100 inch pounds. In cases where the axle shaft is up against the pinion shaft, you may find additional clearance when you remove the C-locks. With the C-locks out, remeasure the side gear clearance and record it.
If the side gear clearance changes less than 12 thousandths with the C-locks removed, install the thickest thrust washer possible and reassemble the differential. If the side gear clearance increases more than 12 thousandths with the C-locks removed, use new side gears and repeat the tests. If the clearance still exceeds 12 thousandths when using new side gears and the thickest thrust washers possible, you'll have to replace the differential case itself. When all clearances meet specifications, thoroughly clean both mating surfaces and apply a 1 16th bead of silicone rubber sealant around the cover. Install the cover with the axle ratio identification tag and torque the bolts to 250 inch pounds before refilling the carrier with lubricant. When you finish the job, test drive the car. There should be a definite reduction in clunk as a result of your adjustment. Reducing clunk on the seven and a quarter inch axle requires a little more work. The right side gear is easier to check, so measure it first, since you'll have to pull the differential assembly if the clearance behind either gear exceeds five thousandths. Bend the blade behind on the ring gear side. If you find excessive clearance, remove the wheels and brake drums. After you block up the brake pedal to avoid accidentally expanding the wheel cylinders, remove the retainer nuts and you're ready to pull the axle shafts. A few firm taps should break the axle shaft free, bringing with it the retaining plate assembly. We've also removed the brake plate for better visuals. Leave them attached to the axle when you do the job. With both axles out, replace the shaft seals and remove both adjuster locks, but do not remove the bearing caps yet. First, Mark the carrier and the bearing caps, because you must put these parts back in their original position. Then loosen the adjusters to relieve the preload from the differential bearings. Now, after removing the bolts, carefully take out the bearing caps, the bearing cups, and the differential assembly. Except on the 2.47 ratio axle, you'll have to pull the ring gear in order to slide the shaft out. With all other axles, Mark the location of the ring gear because you must reassemble it in its original position. Remove the left-hand threaded bolts and tap the gear free with a brass drift. Now drive out the pinion shaft lock pin and tap the shaft out of the case with a brass drift. Remove the two pinion gears and you can take out the side gears and the thrust washers. Select the thickest washer you can fit behind each side gear and reassemble the differential. Here again, you can use the pinion shaft to assist in aligning the two pinion gears and their washers during installation. Recheck the gap with the new thrust washers installed. If the clearance still exceeds five thousandths with the thickest thrust washers, you'll have to replace the differential assembly. If you find acceptable clearance, Continue to reassemble the differential. Use the slot to line up the shaft with the hole and install a new lock pin. Relieve the sharp edge around the chamfer with an Arkansas stone to prevent interference before fitting the ring gear back onto the differential case. Heating it may make the job easier for you. Use a heat lamp or immerse the gear in hot fluid which does not exceed 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Do not use a torch. Align the reference marks and carefully fit it into position. Use new bolts, gradually tightening each one in an alternating pattern until they're all torqued to 70 foot-pounds. Coat the bearings, cups, and adjusters with lubricant, then place the whole assembly into the carrier. Follow the procedure in your service manual for tightening the bearing adjusters to obtain the correct runout and preload. After the adjusters are correctly set, install the adjuster locks, making sure the teeth engage with the adjuster threads. Tighten the lock bolts to 90 inch pounds. Be sure to use new axle shaft seals and liberally coat the outer diameter of the shaft bearings with grease. Replace the gaskets when installing the axle shafts and retainers. Carefully tap each shaft into place with a soft-faced hammer and torque the retainer nuts to 35 foot-pounds. 
After applying a 1 16th bead of silicone sealant to the cover, replace the ratio identification tag, torque the bolts to 250 inch pounds, and refill the axle with lubricant. When you've reassembled the axle, road test the car. A thorough diagnosis not only results in a more professional job, it also makes you the winner. Thank you.